The ocean can be selfish at times. Once it has one of our things, it rarely wants to give it back. As a science diver, you are an ambassador to the species. So if someone drops their stupid quadrat and there's no intrepid filmmaker to grab it for them, or if the ocean has been holding on to something of ours for a while, this episode, Search and Salvage, will teach you how to ask politely to get it back. First off, back to basics. Here's a reciprocal as a reminder. Diver Dan is my buddy. We have just left the sandbar where he was chatting up a very cute mermaid. Red hair, bit of a hoarder, lovely singing voice though. She gave us the heading to a pinnacle that we are following. Midway through, Diver Dan realizes he left his keys back at the sandbar. So we have to turn around and head back. Lucky for us, that's as simple as flipping a Yui, adding 180 degrees to our heading, and we can follow that directly back to his inevitable embarrassment. Which is okay for him, want to let him down easy. Overheard something about a prince, and that Jamaican crab guy was a bit annoying. But I digress. Let's take a look at some other search patterns building on what you already know with this reciprocal. This is called the parallel search. If you're a cubist, it will make a lot of sense because it relies on right angles. First, you swim out on a straight heading, a particular number of fin kicks. Then you rotate 90 degrees, another number of fin kicks, depending on the visibility. And then you basically do a reciprocal back to the plane you started at with another 90 degree turn. Once you swam back your same number of fin kicks, you rotate 90 degrees again, progressing in this geometric fashion until you find the object that you were looking for. In this case, Diver Dan and I were both thoroughly disappointed to find that the X in fact marked the location of an X. Applying this parallel search to a slope, you get what's called a contour search. And it's kind of cool because you're using your depth gauge as a searching tool. Every step that you take down or up that slope, you find a new depth and follow that same depth contour in a stepwise progression. In this case, we were looking for something that the bespeedoed swimmers dropped, and I can tell you that upon inspection of the object, I wish I'd had three X's to put up on screen. Anywho, the parallel and contour search are good ways of covering a big area. If you're generally pretty sure of where you dropped the thing, an expanding square might do you good. You start in a point, swim X fin kicks away from it, turn 90 degrees, swim another X fin kicks, and now you expand that square by, let's say, Y fin kicks. You do two sides every time at the same distance, and you keep adding Y, a predetermined number of fin kicks, so you are expanding your search zone. Be sure to stay out of the way of the human cannonballs dive bombing you throughout any search pattern. And what we're doing right now is we're trying to find Diver Dan's favorite dive trophy. He was pretty sure where he dropped in the deep end, and using an expanding square, we can get him back to his lost love. Oh, look at that, it's adorable. Another way to search around a specific point is the arc search. Using your buddy and the meter tape, you reel out the tape a distance, lock it off, and swim 180 degrees. Your buddy tugs on the line to let you know where that point is. You reel out a little bit further, expanding your arc, and then you swim pi radians all the way back. Another line pull from the buddy tells you it's time to go a little bit further away. You lock it off and then swim another arc to find what you're looking for. In this case, Diver Dan and I were a little bit hungry and we were looking for some deep sea burgers. Once we find our spot right there, reel up the tape, mark the exact distance, and then take a heading directly back to your buddy. This way you can swim straight there the next time you're looking for some delicious deep sea subs. All right, now that you know how to look for stuff, let's talk about moving it. Take this salvage for example. This thing is figuratively and literally anchored to the bottom. You could try to lift it yourself, but you probably throw out a few of the important things that you need up where they walk, up where they run, up where they stay all day in the sun. Now what we're gonna use are some lift bags. Lift bags come in a few different sizes and styles. The red one on the right is a closed or pillow style lift bag. The yellow one on the left is an open lift bag. You know what's not a lift bag? Your BC. You know what's not the right air to put inside a lift bag? 
the stuff you are breathing. This is a common mistake of using the air that you are breathing to put inside a lift bag. It makes sense when you consider that, well, no, it doesn't make sense, don't do this. Okay, what's safe is if you bring down a tank dedicated to the lift. For this open style lift bag, you need what's called a monkey dick. <laughs> monkey dick. It's also called a tilt valve, you tilt it, air comes out. Insert the monkey dick into the open part of the lift bag, but don't overdo it. There can be a lot of suction if the object is in mud, so make sure you break that suction first, add a little bit of air, give it a little bit of a shake, that way you're not overfilling the back. Once you've achieved liftoff, you gotta control the ascent the same as you control your own ascent. Dump air as you go up so it doesn't get away from you, and once you're on the surface, inflate that sucker as much as you can so that it doesn't go anywhere. One downside to the open style lift bag is it can flip over and lose all of its buoyant power. That's why we like these closed style lift bags. One huge drawback is they do not take the monkey dick. Oh well, get rid of that and you will use a connector that looks a lot like your BC connector hose. Pump a little bit of air into the bag, making sure to shake your object in case it was suctioned to the bottom. Make sure the coast is clear before heading up, and once you've achieved neutral buoyancy, it's time to go to the surface. Grab that dump valve, but keep a hand on the inflator. As you dump air, you might dump a little bit too much. You might need to reinflate a little bit so it doesn't just sink right back down to the bottom. Once you're on the surface, pump that sucker full of air so it stays where it needs to be, and then await further instruction from the Steve man. All right, Steve, how'd that look? That was mediocre at best. Now go back down. Okay, here we go. Back down. Whatever. Controlling your descent with your cargo is as simple as maintaining neutral buoyancy on the way down. If you can find that sweet spot, you can move mountains or scuba tanks and buckets. In any case, as you go down, make sure that you are periodically reinflating or ready to do so in case you need to control that descent a little bit further. And once you have hit pay dirt, go ahead and dump the rest out. Congratulations, you're now a search and salvage master. But you still get a recap. You are not a lift bag, don't use your own air, and control yourself. Okay, you master you, off we go to deep and blue diving.